Welcome to the EK Expo 2021. I'm Tech Odin from the YouTube channel Bearded Hardware. I'm here to show you one of EK's coolest new water blocks, the EK Quantum X Delta TEC. EK teamed up with Intel to build no ordinary water block. Unlike normal water blocks that can only cool to ambient temperatures, this one can do subambient by adding a device called a, a Peltier. I usually call it a Pelt or a TEC, some people call it Tech. A Pelt is a device that uses electricity and controls the flow through junctions inside it. This creates a phenomenon called the Pelletier effect, where all the heat goes to one side and the cold reaction goes to the other. This allows for the cold side to achieve very cold temps as long as the hot side of the Pelt is cooled near ambient temperature. Looking at the water block, you can see that the water block is broken up into several parts. You have the cold plate, the Pelletier, and the water block. The pelt is sandwiched in the middle with the water block cooling the hot side and the cold plate connected to the cold side of the pelt to transfer the subambient temps to the CPU. The pelt used is a 200 watt version, enough to cool 350 plus watts coming from the CPU, but it depends on how good the cooling is to cool the pelt itself. What makes this product really special is what Intel developed. Before, controllers would just turn the pelt on and off go full power and then turn off and full power. Now with the Intel controller, the voltage is digitally ramped up and lowered on demand, allowing for greater efficiency. It also has the ability to read sensors like dew point to adjust for condensation and also BIOS interaction for use with terminal velocity boost. This allows for the most efficient use of the Pelt device. The controller has sensors and also connects to the motherboard using a USB header. Make sure you have enough room or you have an open header on the motherboard because it is a requirement to get it working. The controller needs to be able to connect to the motherboard to talk and communicate. I personally like the controller not installed on the block. I, I feel like it takes away from the block itself. The block is actually really sexy, so there's no point in doing it. Uh, one issue with it though is that uh, the wires are a little bit short so you're going to have be limited on what you can do as far as where you put the actual controller itself. For setup of the device you will need an 8 pin PCIe power connector coming from your power supply. Also take into consideration the extra power needed as you will need an extra 200 watts just to run the pelt. It's highly recommended that this device runs on its own dedicated loop as the pelt. Depending on your mode, it will saturate the loop with heat, causing any other device in the same loop to heat up. By adding a GPU to the loop, especially these days with GPUs like the 3090 pushing 500 plus watts on water, this will heat the temperature going to the CPU and the pelt efficiency will be pretty much lost. Because remember, the colder you keep the hot side of the pelt, the colder the cold side will be. So you need to make sure that you have a dedicated loop when you're going to install this. Otherwise, you're basically just gonna have a heater to heat up the rest of your system. This leaves some cool ideas like putting the pellet loop in an ice bucket and trying to get that hot side really cold so that way you can get that cold side really, really cold. We will have to try that in another video. Make sure you subscribe. Now for supportability. Windows 10 only, this can only be installed with the Z490 chipset motherboards. You only need to download a BIOS if you want to use Terminal Velocity Boost. The only way to get that is that if the BIOS actually supports it. So check whatever motherboard you're going to be using and download the proper BIOS for that. If you're going to be doing for all core clocking where you're setting it all manually, you do not need a BIOS. You can just basically go ahead and start testing and playing around. I would like to see this opened up a bit for other Intel chipsets. It would be cooler for some of the older versions because you could get a lot out of this. It's too cool not to be able to use it on other products. I personally tested it on a Z490 Asus Rogue Apex with an Intel 10900K and G-Skill Trident Royal Z memory. I use the EK Coolstream Triple 360 Rad. With pelts, the more rad, the better. Again, remember, the colder you keep the hot side of the pelt, the colder your cold side will be. I'm also using the EK Quantum Kinetic FL240 Pump Reservoir, the Slim Reservoir with the D5 Pump. I love the Slim Reservoir look with the integrated pump. It does the job and it looks cool at the same time. With this setup, I was completely impressed. I could boot up at 5.3 GHz all core and still have an idle temp of 40C with ambient room temp around 27C. 
with not even the pelt turned on. Remember, if the pelt's not on, the system is actually still being cooled, so you don't necessarily have to worry about that it's going to kill the system. Just make sure you pay attention to temps. To turn the Pelletier off and on, you will need to download software from Intel's website. I highly recommend going to EK's website and following the directions. Remember, if you can't get it working, maybe you should look at the directions. After installing the software, this is where the magic happens. You basically have three modes. Number one is off, that's basically standby mode, where the pellet is basically not on whatsoever. So you don't have to worry about heating up that loop. Number two is the cryo mode. This is a regulated connection. What it does is it uses the dew point and a couple al algorithms inside the controller. And what it does is it basically tries to make sure that you don't have any issues with condensation. So if you're really worried about your setup and you don't want to ruin your setup, this is the one that you're going to want to run. Now the third one is unregulated mode. This is where you have to be careful because condensation could form. This will give you the coldest temperatures though. So if you're really feeling like you really want to push it, this is where you want to be. Cryo mode will keep it from going too cold and it will try to balance the condensation issue. And it works very well doing it too. The unregulated mode is basically a max performance mode. I was able to take my 5.3 gigahertz 10900K and run R15 at 5.4 gigahertz at the same voltage. My chip would never run 5.4 on any other water setup that I've had. With the subambient temps, that's why I was able to push it up just a little bit. I also tested this on my record port royal bench settings where I run, usually run liquid nitrogen on. Futuremark port royal is a great way to test your machine to see if it can handle the latest and greatest games. To be honest, I really didn't expect it to work this good using 200 watts of cooling went way further than I thought. I was able to push my test setup from 5.3 gigahertz all core to 5.5 gigahertz. I was also able to push the cash ratio to 53. Usually with a water setup, you're only able to do around 49. That magical five gig uh, needs subambient temperatures. I was also able to push my memory clocks even further because of the lower temps also. It's very impressive. So if you're looking to have fun and take your water cooling rig to the next level, give your PC a nitrous boost and check out the EK Quantum X Delta Tech Water Block. Thanks to EK for having me and here's to a great 2021.